think how many times does a uh, like if you love Jesus actually help anyone? <laughs> <laughs> every time, every time, Tyler, every time that that goes out, someone is saved. Now, someone likes it and says, "All right, I'm gonna go back to stabbing my brother now." <laughs> No, you're good. Like this? Yeah. Cool. You'll make a great helmsman. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings and welcome to the Computer Studies Podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Elliott, and I have with me today two very special, distinguished guests. I have with me Mr. Tyler Carrera, a junior in the Biblical Studies program, as well as Mr. Jersey Abdi, a senior in the Computer Information Systems program. Tonight, we have a question that these two are going to debate. The question is, should Emmaus Bible College have a computer studies department? Mr. Carrera, as our guest this evening, would you please open? Well, thank you for having me. I am looking forward to discussing this topic with my uh, friend and colleague, Jersey W. Abdi. He's a very competent scholar, and he always makes me feel better whenever he speaks, so it'll be fun to discuss this topic with him. I'm arguing that there are should absolutely not be a computer major at Emmaus. I think that notion is uh, somewhat absurd. It's, it's not a needed major. My reasonings boil down to that um, Emmaus is a Bible school and our focus is the Bible and we shouldn't take away from that, whether it be a uh, more professional degree like um, like computers or uh, sports such as soccer and volleyball. My second reason is that computers really have been detrimental to society, to society in a number of ways. We see that they've made you know certain certain sins easier to come by or uh, made them more common. And lastly, um, we we don't see computers in the Bible. We don't we don't see any modern day technology at all. So why should we teach that if it's if it's not in the scriptures? Thank you, Mr. Abdi. Your opening statement. Please. Yes, indeed, I would. I want to thank Mr. Elliot for hosting this uh, wonderful debate, and I'd like to thank my opponent, Tyler Carrera, for being here. Tyler is a pretty competent scholar most of the time. My position is the obvious correct one, that Bible colleges should be accredited in all areas and give non-Bible degrees. I think this should go without saying. Of course, we need Bible colleges to give out computer and other degrees. My three lines of reasoning is that technology has become an integral part of our life to be able to address it. And we see that this is modeled in the apostles' use of modern technology in the New Testament. Also, part of Emmaus' mission statement is to uh, equip people for faithful and effective service in ministries and professions. And computers are fun, and we don't want to be unhappy like the Puritans. Thank you. Mr. Carrera, your first point. My first point is that um, Emmaus Bible College is a Bible school, and we don't want to take away from that. Um, having the... Uh, every program is a double major um, program, ends up uh, hurting uh, the students. They end up pulling their focus away from the Bible and to focus on their uh, degree track, or they pull their focus away from their degree track uh, to focus on the Bible, which is great, but when you're affecting your effectiveness in the work field in a negative way, that that's... Uh, that's hurtful, and I think the school is doing the students a disservice by offering the computer program. Would you agree with the statement that no man can serve two masters? I, I do agree with this statement. Um, your master will either be your computer major or your Bible major, and I suggest that your master should be the Bible. Mr. Abdi, your response? I think you are uh, taking that statement out of context, and Tyler is not being a good scholar and just simply taking this low-hanging fruit. Um, I think, you know... A life is all about balancing, and I don't think we need to separate our uh, spiritual lives from, you know, normal everyday stuff, and to do that is to kind of create a dichotomy, and we don't want to do that. Perhaps if you had more time to study the scriptures. You know, as we know, I'm going to have my list to get sorted out. So studying the scriptures isn't really at the top of your list? No, no, that, that's, that's what one, you said. That that's one what issue. you said. That one issue, man. Mm, the one, you know... I mean, if the one issue was the nature of salvation, would oh, that not oh, be on the top of the your one list? on top of my list. Mm. So you're really picking and choosing what in the Bible to spend your time on. Yeah. Because, I mean, the Bible is such a vast and wonderful book. If I try to study everything, I mean, 
I, there's not enough time in my life to do that, so you really got to either pick something and go. So maybe you should make the most of that time and forego the computer information system major. You know, I really, really don't want to get ripped off by Dell for the rest of my life, so I'm going to stick with my computer degree. I have never been ripped off by Dell in uh, my life. Do you have a Dell PC or an HP PC? I, I do, and I, they have... You've got ripped off. They've given me a great deal every you, time. You have you been know ripped nothing. off. You know let us leave other companies out of this if we can, so that we are not sued for <laughs> We are in no way affiliated with HP or Dell. Mr. Abdi. Yes. Your first point. Oh, yes. Uh, technology has become an integral part of our life, and we see it in the way the uh, apostles use technology of their time, like their Roman citizenship, roads, and aqueducts, to uh, navigate the Roman world and spread the gospel. Mr. Carrera, you mentioned that technology was not mentioned in the Bible. It's true. Yet Mr. Abdi here has given a stellar example of modern technology being used within the Bible. How would you respond? The Romans did not have computers. I mean, sure, they had their, they had their roads, but um, you could argue that Every single nation has had some form of road or way of travel. I don't think that's a good argument. The Romans just made it a little bit better, made it more efficient, and they and the apostles used that to their advantage. But I don't see very many people getting saved through Like If You Love Jesus posts on Facebook. I want to respond. Uh, I think Tyler is taking too narrow a definition of technology. Obviously, technology can cover any sort of device that's created to make life better. Heck. Uh, the bow and arrow is technology at the time. So I think you're just you're taking technology in just a modern sort of computer fancy schmancy sense. Well, we're, I mean, seeing as we're focused on a computer major, I don't have a, an issue with my definition of technology as it is. We don't see modern day technology in the Bible, so maybe we should focus on, on the things we see in the Bible. So do you, do you want to go back just to using uh, horses for travel and... Uh, you know, whipping people when they don't agree with your theology? I I am not completely against whipping you when you disagree with me. Um, you, you couldn't whip me if you tried. It, it would beat some sense into you. Nor am I against horseback as a way of travel. It would be a lot more fun, and gas is very expensive. That's true, gas is... But horses are also expensive. So is hay. Hay, hay is expensive, but you could... You could get that from any farmer, really. Do, just... do you really want to drive... Not drive. Do you really want to ride a horse... To go to Chicago all the time? It, the traffic is terrible on the road, so I'd probably get there a little bit faster. You may not be wrong. Gentlemen, we've wandered from the point a little bit. Tyler, if you would please give us your second point. Um, my second point was we don't see computers in the Bible. I'll, I'll, I'll give a definition that you're happy with, and I'll just focus on computers. We don't, we don't see those in the Bible. The, there were there were plenty other of efficient, uh, easy way of communication. You know, sending letters back and forth has been something we've done for a long time, and perhaps we should focus on that instead of the um, impersonal natures of computers. Mr. Abdi, do computers play a role in the current spread of the gospel? I think, of course, the computers play a special role, an important integral role in the spread of the gospel from mediocre PowerPoint presentations to just being able to talk to your friend they haven't seen in over a year and be able to kind of catch up with them and help them out when they need help. Perhaps you could speak to Bible translation efforts. Oh my, Tyler, you use accordance every day. You're going to tell me you that's not helpful? I have a paper version of accordance. That does not exist. It's a ton accordance. You do not, you do not use that ever. You said that um, you were able to, you know, talk to your friends. I believe pen pals were a thing long before the rise, uh, the infamous rise of email. You were able to send letters back and forth. Wouldn't that be just as efficient in sharing the gospel as instant messaging? You are not necessarily wrong, but you have to know where somebody lives and... You know, maybe it's been a couple years since you've seen Timmy, and you really want to see what Timmy's doing, and he's on Facebook, so you shoot him a message. Your second argument, Mr. MD. My second argument is that part of Emmaus' mission statement is to equip people for faithful and effective service in ministry and professions. So, you have to have some sort of professional degree, like a computer systems major. Mr. Carrera, do you agree that someone with a Bible degree only cannot get a successful career position? Someone with only a Bible degree? That's correct. I would, I could get a great um, burger flipping job at McDonald's, and I could climb my way through the corporate corporate ladder, so I think you're incorrect in that. I think Tyler's statement speaks for itself. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Your third point, Mr. Abdi. 
my third point, computers are fun, and we don't want to be like those unhappy, sad Puritans. Here's your response, sir. The Puritans were a very happy people. They, mm. they just uh, had a high, they, they thought strongly of their sin, and they wanted to, um, to quote John Piper, not waste their life, as some do, with, with toys or um, foolish activities or computers, for that matter. You know, the Puritans spent a lot of time just worshiping and praying to God, and they'd be appalled by our, our binge-watching on Netflix. Don't you also binge-watch? I... That is, that is not part of the discussion. Fair enough. I think, you know, Puritans definitely had a very uh, high view of their sin. In a, in a good... Not like the... Yeah, like, you like, get you know what I'm saying? But uh, you, we just look at them, they look miserable. I mean, I don't think God hates fun. He made a pretty cool place for Adam and Eve. And they ruined it. They, they did ruin it. It was, it was quite sad. But, you know, Based I think... Based on that statement, Tyler, would you agree that computers existed in a pre-fall state? I do, and they, that, that's what really caused sin. The, the serpent this, is a metaphor for, the serpent for a, a computer mouse. How, how does that work with a thorough intent? Uh, how would Moses have known what a computer is? Inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Do you, so you're saying that Moses got a vision of a computer mouse and put that in Genesis? Much like John got a got a revelation of the end times and put that into the book of Revelation. It starts with a revelation and ends with a revelation. I think I'm just going to say no comment. Thank you very much. Any closing comments, Mr. Abdi? I would like to say that I'm right and I was wrong. Closing comments, Mr. Ferrer? I am more right and he is more wrong. He knows nothing. Very well. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope you've drawn your own conclusion from this discussion. We'll see you guys next time. Bye! He get called to Kunjun's office and be like, you, you said what about, about he didn't...